Also, um, as uh, double cheeseburger uh, large fries. Actually, I'll make it four double cheeseburgers, four large fries, an apple pie, an ice cream. Oh, fuck, we're recording. Um, aye, a large diet coke, large. Right, thank you. Hello and welcome to another edition of Dealer's Choice. Uh, episode eight, actually. We're getting on in times, and we've got an absolute British legend on the table and off the table. Today, it is the Jamie O'Connor Show. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking neighbours will hate me for putting that shit on, pal. I'll tell you that. <laughs> How we doing? Yeah, good, mate. Good, thanks. Duff, um, been a while. It has. Um, I think it was Barcelona, I think was the last time I seen you a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. How's life been treating you? Not too bad, mate. Not too bad. Steady away. Just doing the usual, really. It's uh, been shamming up. What's, what's lockdown been like? I mean, you're based in Wakefield at the moment, just outside Leeds. Yeah. yeah what's that's uh, right. lockdown been like for you? Um, it, it took a bit of getting used to it at the start, but like, the games just went mental. Like, the traffic went up like, like 300, 400% at the start. So it gave you something to do. So. <laughs> We're playing non-stop for like a month or two, but then the games have started to die down quite a lot. So just been like going out. I've been seeing a lot more like the countryside and stuff, just walking about and um, yeah, trying to do a bit more exercise, but it's easier said than done. <laughs> Tell me about it, buddy. Tell me about it. It's been, uh, it's been an eye opener. It's something I never thought I would have ever experienced in my lifetime. Um, it's, just, it's, it's just a mess. I mean, you are uh, living... Uh, with your partner, um, yeah. Adrian, and the wee man recently, uh, Theo. Is it Theo yeah, or Theo? Right. Yeah. Theo. Um, yeah. So you'd be getting out a lot more with him and spending a lot more time with him as opposed to uh, yeah. live grind. Just like going to feed the ducks and like um, Yorkshire Dales isn't too far for us. So I've just been going like on like walks for the day and stuff like that, picnics, stuff like that. I mean, uh, it's, been, it's been good to spend some time, more time because, like, if you're playing live, yeah. you don't really get that opportunity if you're away for like a week and stuff. So it's been it's been a bit different, but I've enjoyed it. So. I suppose it's good having it at this kind of time in his life when he's still a young lad and he's still yeah, taking. Yeah, it exactly. I, well, that's what I said. Like, we we couldn't have fit in a better time, really. So brilliant. Um, I saw get this kicked off, mate. Um, you were born in Pontefract in 1989. Uh, Mum and Dad, Jane and David. Yeah, that's um, right. I've got a massive list here of the brothers and sisters. I mean, uh, I take it to tell you <laughs> what they were working back in the days. Eh? Um, you sure the paper's long enough? <laughs> <laughs> uh, your sister, uh, Brianna, and is it A? I'm, I'm terrible with names. Aislinn. Aislinn. There we go. And uh, brothers, Ashley. Quinlan and um, Raiden. Raiden, there we go. I, yeah. I can't read my writing either. So some of um, them are Irish names, so they're hard to pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it is. It's probably easier to announce for the normal person, but me with my my accent. Yeah. Right, so. yeah. But I mean, growing up in uh, Pontefract, what was it like? Was it a hard kind of growing up? Um, it, it's like an old uh, coal mining village. Uh, not a village, a town. Sorry. So. Obviously, all that investment went in like the 1980s and stuff, so it left a lot of people without many jobs to do. Like, so there isn't that much opportunity around there at the minute, which is quite a shame. But I, I was lucky to find poker, really. So, yeah, I mean, um, when you were growing up, um, you done school, and then you went to, I think you went to college. You done studied sports science. Yeah, that's right. Was there a reason for studying sports science, or was it just a case of I'm um, sporty sort of thing? Or that's what I want to find. just yeah. Well, like the one thing when I was at school, that was well, the one thing that I always used to look forward to. I'd never miss a PE session, so it just followed on from that. Really, I used to play like for all the sport teams and stuff at school, like even like cricket and basketball <laughs> stuff like that. I just used to love any game, so. Just followed on from that, really. I used to play for like um, a football team as well. I still play for one now, but I only get like last five or ten minutes for them because I ain't got no fitness. <laughs> You're a big Leeds man, big Leeds United fan. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, we're, we're looking good this season, so. Yeah, I mean, 
by if the time this goes out, it, then, <laughs> then I'm done. So by the, by the time this goes out, you've either clinched promotion or you've done yeah. the normal fucking bottling it. Uh, yeah, well, it, it pains I, me, like. Yeah. Uh, because we, I, I mean, we've got I, a I promotion still... party planned for this Sunday, actually. So if it ends up going wrong, we'll look a bit stupid. <laughs> Because it's um, is it the big pre derby or is it Barnsley on Thursday? Yeah, yeah, and they're at the bottom as well. So unfortunately, like they've still got something to play for. You'd rather play like someone in twelfth, yeah. thirteenth, but they need to win to stay up. So it's going to make it even more feisty. So and is that at Ellen Road or is it at uh, yeah, it's Ellen Road? Yeah. I was going to say the crowd will get behind them, but I, I suppose <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't really make a difference nowadays. Um, no, no. There shouldn't be any sort of home advantage because everybody's kind of playing the same. But I mean, it yeah. would be good. I mean, I, I like Leeds um, ever since my team beat you in the Champions League qualifier many years ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I do like, I think they're far too big for those divisions, yeah. man. Uh, the fan base, the, the team, I mean, it's a massive area in England as yeah. well. And I think it's just a matter of time. Good manager, Marco Bielsa or Bielsa? Marcelo Bielsa, yeah. Like, I. I never understood how much a difference if it makes if you get a really good manager. Like mm-hmm. he's, he's unreal. Like he, the squad isn't actually that good. They're probably like a mid-table team, but he's just turned them into like will be as like yeah. everyone's improved. So yeah, I mean uh, they have been playing some good football. Uh, they kind of chucked it last year. Um, I don't know yeah. if that was given that stupid go away back to Aston Villa. Yeah, um, it could be that. <laughs> <laughs> but now, hopefully, fingers crossed for you, buddy, and I hope you have a good yeah. night on Thursday. Um, yeah. Kicking back on with this, um, so in between going from like your education to poker, did you have any jobs in between? Just like some small ones, like for like six months, I was doing like removal service for for a company, and then um, doing labouring on a building site. So, in in Leeds, was it legitimately a removal service or was it a removal service? <laughs> yeah, the second, the last. <laughs> And what what got you into uh, uh, poker? Was it uh, telly or were you seen like something online? I used to watch my dad actually from when I was young. Like when I used to get like five pound a week pocket money and that was when I was like 10. Mm-hmm. Me and my friends, we used to always go to the um, fair when it would air on the bandits or um, <laughs> when they weren't there, we used to go to the bus station cafe and go in there and play on the bandits in there. So... I started gambling from a young age and then I started watching my dad when I was like 15, 16. Started playing a few free roles and then just worked up from there, really. But did he play like Texas or that? Or was it like five card yeah. draw? Or... No, I used to play Texas, yeah. He used to play yeah. Texas. Right? So that kind of yeah. got you into it and then you kind of wanted to move yeah. it further. What did you do first? Was it live or online? Online, yeah. So online you got into Um <clears throat> And was that... Like just little free rolls or little mini games and then build yourself up for there? Yeah, just free rolls really. So um, did... when when I got like a couple of years later, we used to go to um you know like the Riley Snook rolls. Yeah. They used to have like twenty pound rebuys and stuff there and like in some pubs. So we we started playing those and then just got better and better from there really. Was that like the nuts poker league sort of thing there? Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. And he's built up for there. I mean, it's held you in good stead. I mean, your bread and butter, uh, from what I've looked at and from what you said, would probably be the online stuff. Yeah. How long did you, <clears throat> excuse me, do online and then you thought, actually, I could make a, a proper living out of this? Um, I always thought, like, just for... <laughs> it's funny when you're younger, like, you always <laughs> overlook stuff and you think, oh, well... Yeah. This is it now. Like I've made it. I'm I'm gonna start looking at like five million pound houses and stuff. And <laughs> so I was probably a bit delusional when I was younger. But um I always I've always known that you can definitely make like some even the small steady money, like a couple of hundred pounds a week if if I really wanted to. But uh-huh. when it started getting more and more and like you're having big scores for like say five K here, ten K there, then you're like, well, maybe I might be on something. So, yeah. I mean, mum and dad, they, they weren't really too keen on it at the start. Like, yeah. They, they didn't see it as like a job that you can have that's sustainable. But mm-hmm. um, 
put some persuading over the years and eventually they come around to it. So, Do you think your dad was a bit more understanding uh, given the fact that he used to play and you kind of learnt from him sort of thing? Or Yeah, yeah. But he, they were still wanting me to... They'd rather me go to like college and that first mm. and then get, get finished from there. But I'd already got it set in my head that I just wanted to play poker, so... And um, what was your first big, like, your decent online score that you thought, you know what, this is it, um, that's it, online mm. poker, live poker? Do you remember? Uh, I can't think off the top of my head, to be honest. Like, I, the main time where I start, I've, I went from, like, playing more casually to mm. um, wanting to take it more serious. I applied for a couple of, like, staking companies. And then once I got on with those... And you got a bankroll every day, and yeah, but you had like some mentoring and stuff. I thought, well, I'll give it a go with this, and then it, it just went on from there, really. Did you look up to like people back in those days and like want to like be like a sponge and absorb like television poker, online tutorials, people talking? Yeah, yeah? were you that sort of person that would listen? Because there's a lot of people nowadays that. Yeah. I used to coach football years ago and you try and talk to them and they're just like, yeah, 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 whatever. Or were you like an open book? Did you like let it come in at you and just listen to everything? Well, one of the first people I used to play for, um, Paul Jackson. Mm -hmm. And I learned so much off him. Like some of his stuff now, it might not work as well, but like he were like ahead of the curve back yeah. in the day and he, he were really good to like learn from because he'd break it down easily as well. He wasn't like using all these like, big terms and stuff that people do these days, like especially like the young people. It, it more like um, an old-fashioned way of looking at it, but it, like, it were easier to take in, if you get what yeah. I mean. Yeah, I mean, do you think it's it's better to have it taught to you like that, as you say, easier to listen to it, as opposed yeah. to people who use... I mean, I've seen a few tutorials and stuff that myself, Jimmy. Um, People use oh the this is an eighty nine point five four three four five percent chance of doing this and the algorithms and that and then I mean yeah, for that's the, what that's what I meant kind of yeah. thing like I mean like it it does cater for a certain audience like yeah. especially like some of the younger people but it, it doesn't really interest me as much to be honest. You'd rather just have it like boom, that's yeah. it there, A, B, C, D. Yeah, I mean, like, normally, normally, if I'm doing research and like I'm doing a bit of studying, I go through the people who break it down easier, like on the um, on the videos and stuff, on like say run it once and stuff. There's yeah. some that it can just go into it like that, and others, like you said, it's it's a bit of a um, <laughs> head fuck. <laughs> I mean, there is, there is people, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not criticizing them, but there is people out there who. When it comes to the mathematics, when it comes to the equations and shit like that, they're like brilliant and they don't like the other ABC sort of learning. Yeah. And then on the flip side, there's people that like the ABC black and white and they don't like the other side. So, I mean, as you say, Paul was good like that. He kind of knew yeah. the audience he had and he could cater to that. I mean, do you still watch training videos? Do you still listen to certain people? I haven't got as much time to do as much studying as I used to do. Now I've got a kid, but mm -hmm. it's... I mean, it's hard to fit as much in. I still do now and again, but probably about 25% as much as I used to. But you're still learning every day sort of thing? You're still... Oh, yeah. yeah. Not every day, but um, I, I mean, to be honest, I'm a bit lazy these days. But, <laughs> um, yeah, whenever, like, the guy who I'm playing for at the minute, he does, like, a coaching session twice a week. So, like, I'll try and make one of those, like, once a week if I can and... He, he brings up some really good stuff, so, yeah. And that's standard backing, is that that's Robert Lipkin yeah, and that, David Peters sort yeah. of thing, yeah? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, I mean, <clears throat> for a lot of people, I mean, I don't know, no disrespect, I don't know uh, Robert, I, I think uh, a lot of people in the poker world don't know who David is. Yeah. Is it good having, the, are, they, are these guys approachable? Like, if you were to pick up the phone at, like, half two in the morning and give them a message, they would be there to say, yeah, this is what you should do? Yeah, yeah, like, well, the good thing is, He's Robert's based in uh, Costa Rica at the minute, so the time zone's perfect for when I'm playing. So if yeah. I've got like a spot where I've had and I'm not sure about it, I'll send him it like half an uh -huh. hour later and then he can get back to me and it just gives you a bit of peace of mind, really. That's always good. It's good to have people that are approachable like that because, I mean, yeah. <clears throat> you think you've got Ryan LaPlante out there who's another one who he's, he's, he's got his own team and that and very, very approachable. But there yeah. is people out there who just 
there you go, there's 10 grand, go and do what you want. And then they don't sort of learn from that. So it's good that you have somebody that you can go to and learn from. The good thing is as well, like, it's really hands on. Like, he, he stakes people for all stakes and they'll start like, he's probably got like 100 players. So he, he's always working nonstop every single yeah. day. So it's, it's good for like, that he can fit everyone in really. That'd be good. Um, you, as I said earlier on, your bread and butter is the online stuff, poker wise. I've got here, yeah. according to Pocket Five and the Hendon Mob, over four million dollars lifetime. You mm. were raided eleventh uh, as high in the world back in two thousand sixteen. Yeah. At least four scoop final tables, a double you coop uh, heads up chop back in two thousand nineteen, fourth in the Sunday Million, and that's just the little bits. The the pointers I've got here. There's an absolute mm. shitload of other results that you've got. Do you feel that your best game is Texas? Yeah, definitely. And if, do you... if, if I'm wanting to like socialise a bit more and have a few drinks, like I love playing <laughs> Six Card Omar. Uh, cash, but, yeah. like, if, if I'm wanting to make money, like I just earn money at that stuff. If I want to make money, it's definitely like tournaments. No limit all them. I mean, when you started uh, playing uh, online, were you a tournament grinder or were you cash? It, our neighbour, actually, our um, heads up to and go grinder. All ah, right, okay. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> what was what put you into the heads up sort of thing? Because a lot of people they get free rolls, they do MTTs and stuff like that. Why why was heads up appealing? I I'm probably going back ten years now, so but good. <laughs> <laughs> it was like. These days, if there's like a heads up lobby, it's pretty much always a reg and hundred percent. But back in the day, like you used to get like just weaker players just sat like non stop in heads up. They used to love the heads up. So yeah. that used to be like if you could get in the right games, uh -huh. then it, it used to be amazing. But was that cash or was that like a sit and go? Uh sit and goes, yeah. And but, um I, I was playing up to like five hundred dollar buy-ins then. So. Ah, okay. And back then, was it just one or two tables you went on, or did you try? Your... I just play like two at a time, to be honest. But like, I'd always have like a few ridged in um, in the lobby. Mm -hmm. And did you have uh, back then? Did you have a few mates that were playing in the area, uh, like you could uh, team up with, or go to their house and have a grind with? Not, not really. No, not a... There wasn't too many from around my area. I remember before I knew Midi, he were like one of the only players in Leeds. So like, I used to look up to him quite a lot. Well, I mean, I still do now, but he used to be like, it's yeah. like poker star that I used to look up to. But it's funny how a few years later on down the line, you can make friends with people like that. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the Brit the Brit I mean, I'm being biased here, but the, I think the British players... They're a good, a good bunch of lads, uh, away from the table, at the table. Um, good for a party, good for a laugh, good mates. I mean, you, you, I know yourself, you're good mates with Billy Chataway, Dan Charlton, you said Middy, all the Scottish mm. boys, all approachable, all brilliant uh, on the tour. Um, and it's good, good to have these sort of people because as well as socialising, you can always bend the ear for poker stuff as well. Yeah, yeah, that's it. The the only thing is, if you're wanting to get your head down and grind, it, it's sometimes a bit hard. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. What would you say is the highlight of your online career so far? Um, just for like being able to play the stakes that I am at the minute. To be honest, like I wouldn't say a particular score. I'd just mm -hmm. say like from moving up from say. I was playing like fifty dollar buy-ins as my biggest game when I first started. Yeah. Now I'm able to play like five k, ten k buy-ins if it's like when a series is on. So I think I think that's a good achievement because not many players are able to do that. So yeah, I mean a lot a lot of people <clears throat> you, you'll know because of the like a lot of the online stuff as well. They get like one big buy-in. Yeah, they want they sorry they get one big bank. And they start yeah. playing out of their level. Did you progress through the stages, or did you ever think, Fuck, "I've got like I've just won ten grand. I'm going to play higher stakes"? Um, I've I've done similar, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, I've 
I started progressing up and I was doing really well. And then I thought I'll give it a, go, a shot on my own. And it's it's harder than you think. Like I I wasn't that good with bankroll management, so I just thought just I'm better off just um, staying staked for the time being, like until I can trust myself. It's <laughs> <laughs> it's good as as we've said and we spoke about the, yeah your backers and stuff like that. It's good to have someone who can rein it back in because you you know yourself yeah. all the <clears throat> excuse me the younger sort of generation I say younger forty and below. Um, you know, it can go to your head. You can get you can get caught up in it and go in the oh, rough yeah. and go mental and like just yeah. lose it. But it's good to have somebody who says, right, go out. But you can come back and then we can just chill out. Then we'll get back to the grind. And it's sometimes yeah. I've spoke to a few people who think, oh, at the time I was raging, but looking back on it now, it's good. It's good, to, a good bit to have somebody kind of discipline a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It, <clears throat> I mean, it, it's hard, harder than a lot of people think. Like. And you feel that you should be playing in certain bands, but it's not going well and you're just getting absolutely hammered. It it makes you do have quite a lot of self-doubt, but you've just got to kind of keep... It hurts a lot more when it's your own money as well. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course. Um, now, I've got here, obviously, we've said you're a big Leeds fan. You're a big boxing fan as well. Yeah. Got you a lot of the boxing fight. Big AJ fan. Yeah. Um, Went to... Um, Went to New York for my 30th with my little brother before I went to Vegas and unfortunately I lost. Was that the Andy Ruiz fight, was it? Yeah, yeah. I'd had a bet on the day as well. I had um, AJ to win by KO and Liverpool double, so obviously Liverpool had won. So uh-huh. it um, spoiled my day a bit. <laughs> I think, um, I mean, you'll be a bigger boxing fan than me, uh, Jimmy. A lot of people underestimated Ruiz then. Um, yeah. From reading up and a lot of stuff, I know that he was a he was a good puncher, a very strong puncher, and he could take a hit as well. And everybody looked at him. They seen it. He was sponsored by Snickers. He didn't have the build for a boxer, and everybody yeah. thought piece of piss. Because I think AJ was like one to twenty or one to fifteen or something stupid yeah. Yeah. going into the fight. Yeah, I think he like one to twenty. And um, well, was it a third round knockout or fourth round knockout or something like that? Um, no, I think it was more like maybe the fifth or the sixth, but he got like beat up the whole fight. So, because AJ put him on his backside early doors, yeah. didn't he? And then he came back yeah. and AJ looked shell shell shocked. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <clears throat> but do you enjoy um, like your downtime from poker? Uh, we'll get on to the live uh, events in a minute, but your season ticket holder at Leeds? Um, I was, but then like my girlfriend were pregnant and ah. we had the kid, so. Once we had the um, fear, we, I didn't really think I'd have enough time, so I missed yeah, the yeah. season, and I was planning on going the season after. Turns out they sold out for the season after, so I couldn't <laughs> get back in. <laughs> so but, any any time you wanted to get down now, you have to like you have to be booking the hospitality and stuff. It's just a nightmare. But, but it's, 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 it's kind of annoying because like for years and years when we were doing really bad, we went down to League One. Mm-hmm. Used to be able to turn up on the day, yeah. being like any any part of the stadium you wanted. Now it's tickets like gold dust. Everyone's all the plastic fans have come back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because of the basic promotion pending. Yeah, do you put a lot? Of, as I said, we'll get to the live bit in in a minute. Do you put a lot of the going to the boxing, going to the football? Is a kind of a good chill out away from like just switching off from the poker? Yeah, I think you've got to need you need to have a good balance. Really, like you can't just be playing six to seven days a week I think like maybe if you can have like one or two days off a week or maybe just a full week off if you need it like if you if you play too much you outburn yourself you're not playing well and you don't make the right decisions so I mean do you plan ahead when you're going to go to the game or if you're on a heater will you say to yourself or whoever you're supposed to be going to the football with I'm going to be I'm going to not go to the football because I'm on a massive heater or do you still take that time to go to the football because you need the just to mail out a little bit away from the tables? Um, normally, like, if I'm doing well, <clears> and I'll, I'll just take time off when I want. But mm. normally, I'm, I'm a bit weird. Like, if I'm doing bad, <laughs> I like to try and correct it if I can. Uh-huh. So I'll, I'll keep playing until I can try and correct it. But if it's, like, just sending me crazy, then I'll, I'll have time off doing it as well. Cool. I mean, as I, say, <clears throat> I think you need that sort of balance, as you say, um, because sometimes you can just get deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, yeah. and it can just turn all of a sudden and can come back up. Um, 
do you have any like eating obviously with the grind online primarily do you have any sort of uh, eating habits or like do you always make sure you eat a good breakfast or a good dinner before you start the grind or do you just sit there and just, just eat or deliver you I used to be one of like the unhealthiest person ever like I used to have like takeaways every single night and like going to the shop, getting like tenners worth of like sweets and chocolate. Like I were absolute, <laughs> I were the worst. But um, I started a diet over the last few weeks, so I'm trying to stick to that. So I mean, I'm feeling better for it, but I'm just like knackered all the time at the minute. I think it'll turn though. I mean, it's early yeah. stages and build up, and plus it'll yeah, be I good for the wee man as well. Yeah, I started like um, doing some bike rides, like 15 mile a day and stuff <clears> if I can. Um. Moving on to the live stuff, uh, can you remember the first time you walked into a casino to play a poker tournament? Yeah, um, in Leeds. It used to be a gala casino, but they got bought out by Grosvenor. So, um, yeah, I, c- I can remember it was like, I think it might have been like a £50 freeze out or something, but it's weird like how nervous I used to be then compared to like, I can play like any game now and I'm I'm not too bothered, so... And were you deep into the online <laughs> stuff at that time and you thought, I'm going to have a wee try at this, or do you just... Yeah, yeah. Is I, that I the... can't believe, like, the difference, to be fair, mm. like, with the standard as well. Like, I I was expecting, like, because it was a casino, that it'll be <laughs> like, you know, like, you see on movies and stuff like yeah. that, and just, like, full of hustlers and, like, oh, I've got no chance here, but... <laughs> Yeah, um, I remember the first time I walked in, I'd been watching Late Night Poker and yeah. I thought it was Billy Big Time, but it was like at the round tables and yeah. you got 500 chips. The blinds were 10, 25 or something stupid. And it was like a 10 or rebuy. And yeah. it was pot limit holding back then as well. Eh? And I thought yeah. it was Billy Big Balls. I'd order the glass of water and I'd get the napkin so I wouldn't get any perspiration <laughs> on the fucking cards. And I look back <laughs> on it now and I think, what a fucking arsehole. <laughs> but uh, I mean that held you in good stead um, going forward <clears throat> I've got here your first big uh, live bink uh, first time I met you was GUKPT Luton yeah uh, won that for 47,700 yeah um, why Luton I was just following the Grosvenor series really like I, I think out of all the things that's out there at the minute, especially for like the UK and stuff. Like, I I love their games. I think the structure's yes. perfect. Like, you get the same crowd who follow it. It's a good laugh with like Tower and Dina. It's run yeah. well. Like, you can't fault it. So, I've always like had a soft spot for like playing the Grosvenor comps, the GUKPTs. Yeah, I mean, as a dealer, um, I think the structure is up there with Stars and the WSOP. Uh, yeah, no disrespect definitely. to anybody else. I just think. The blind levels are the correct time, and the, the way the the antis and the blinds go up and stuff yeah. like that. And I the think structure is like, perfect. Like, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just a simple one as well. Like, no, like ten million starts that yes. can, like, you know. I think they they try and incorporate a lot of the older sort of school and the newer school and put it together. It's a credit to like people like Dino and Yanis and that do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it is. I mean, you see, I mean, you see these some of these tournaments attract some really big names. Mm. Uh, to them, I mean, you said, excuse me, yourself, you followed it around, you went to Luton. Mm. Uh, did you go on your own to Luton or were you with friends yeah, or I'll, a backup? I went on my own, yeah. Um, Just got the train down. And um, I seen an interview, I think it was a year after, you got a train to Stevenage and then got the taxi for Stevenage to, yeah. to Luton because it cut off an hour. Yeah. <laughs> when you got to Luton, did you know anybody that was there? Not really, no. No, I, I didn't know that many live players back then, to be honest. Like, that's when I probably started playing live properly, like 2011. So uh-huh. I didn't know too many. I knew of names, but I didn't know them to talk to. Yeah, I mean, was it, can you remember any? I know we're going back about eight, nine years. Can you remember anything significant about that? Or is it just a blur and you just remember winning the trophy? It was when... Um, I mean, like, it's still a big name now, but Luke, Luke Twartz won um, the final table and he'd, he'd like, um, span all that money up on full tilt, like, a yes. couple of years previous. So, it was, like, a massive name to play against at, at that time for me. So, like, I was pretty nervous to play against him, but, yeah. 
So you knew who he was by his name, and you could relate that to online and stuff. Yeah. Because uh, mm. you you got that, and I've got here <coughs> because uh, again I caught the Hendon mob. I think it was two weeks after you finished third in a Vegas deep stack. Now, were you always planning to go to Vegas that soon after it, or did the bink kind of? No, that that made me want to go over. To be fair, yeah. And was that your first time in Vegas? Yeah. Yeah. Um, as I, I've never been. I've heard a lot of people. I was supposed to be there this time, but Corona put paid to that. Uh. Um. Going into Vegas as a as a noob as it was, because you didn't know what to expect, was it like a massive eye opener compared to the UK scene? Yeah, yeah, it, like it's mind blowing. The first time you go, it's like best place in the world for me that I've, that I've visited so far. There's just so much for like any anyone from any walk of life. Like you uh, go, pretty, you can do pretty much anything really. <laughs> I can imagine. I've seen I've seen and heard a few things like, but. You went over on your own, or did you go with a group of people? Uh, I went with a couple of friends, yeah. And had they been before, or were they newbies? As no, well? it were all it were all of us first time. Yeah. So well, you... I, I think we got like um, we got a flight that was one that went direct. It went to like two different places and stopped off, and like it, pff, never do that again, to be honest. But then you learn for these things, though, don't you? Because you'll never do it again. You're, you're probably knackered and all that. And yeah, I mean, yeah. we had um, Ian Simpson on a couple of shows ago and he was talking about, he bumped into somebody new uh, from DTV. And he yeah. said it was the first time there and they were, they, they played, they partied, they went to sleep yeah. for a couple of hours, they played the party. Is it easy to fall into that trap if you're not used to it? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm glad that I actually went for the deep stack one so mm -hmm. that I knew what were coming for when I went for like six week ones um for like the WSOP because I went like in November for just the deep stack that time uh -huh. so like it gave me a taste of what Vegas is like and I knew what I had to come like in the summer but if I had just thrown myself in at deep end and gone for like five six weeks in the when the WSOP is on I don't think I'd have been able to do it to be honest <laughs> I, yeah I've, I've, I've heard a lot of things that people can get caught up on it and sometimes even if you're winning like six weeks in Vegas can be six weeks too much the heat yeah well well, that's it, like, because it, it don't feel like normal reality, just, like, uh -huh. living that lifestyle when you're there for five or six weeks, like, just constantly gambling and drinking, and it, it's just, like, a crazy place. So, like, sometimes people, like, lose a sense of touch with reality, which which is the time you need to kind of get out of there. <laughs> cool. I mean, we've got, I've got here, the, um, you had a few <laughs> other banks, uh, UKIPT final table, Isle of Man in 2013. Yeah. Uh, another poker stars, uh, sorry, another good structure with poker stars. Uh, again, I think it's up them and the Grosvenor sort of structures. Are yeah, good. yeah um, I miss those. It's a shame they got rid of them, yeah. really. I really used to enjoy those. I, I think that they were brilliant because they had, it was the same, you say about the same group travelling for the, the GUKPTs. I think the UKPTs were the same. They were like, you used uh, to have like so many satellite yeah. winners as well. It used to get new players into the game, which you don't really get as much now. So well, it was phenomenal. I mean, we had a couple up here in Edinburgh, and you were like getting half a million pound prize pools, and it was unheard of yeah. in Edinburgh for that sort of thing. But you were getting big time players. Chris Moneymaker was coming to some of them who'd recently won the the World Series and stuff. But every field was rammed. Uh, yeah. Satellites were rammed, and it was it was brilliant because it was like a. Like one k was always massive, and I think they went down to seven seventy and five hundred at some points. But yeah. you were buying in, and no disrespect to like the Grosvenor ones, but these fields were phenomenal because yeah. they could fuel them with the sat the online satellites. Um, I, th I think they were even getting like quite quite a lot of qualifiers from like Europe and stuff yeah. just to come for like a seven hundred pound, like because you were I mean, getting like, the packages if, and stuff. Yeah, like that's what I'm gonna say. If you can get your package and. You got you can treat it as like a little holiday if like yeah. you get knocked out. That's I mean it was it was phenomenal and as you say it is a shame that they've done away with them now because uh, I always used to think they they drew so many big names and just regs. It, uh, it was a strange decision really because like it wasn't as if it were like dying down. It were only like growing, you know. So it's it's a shame really. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Uh, moving forward, you again had another massive deep run in 2017. Uh, London Grand Final for the Grosvenor United Kingdom Poker Tour, where you came second for yeah. 72,000. Um, 
I've seen, I think there was a hand with Luke, that you, Luke Swartz, again, we'll go back to. On the feature table, you had Queens versus Aces. Was that the same tournament? Yeah. Because if that was the same tournament, mate, you'd done well to come back from that short stack. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I think I was down to, like, two big blinds or something. So, I used to be one of those that were always like, oh, well, I'm out now kind of thing. But it, it just proved to me, like, you, a chip in a chair, you're still always in, you know. So, yeah, for those that didn't know, uh, Luke had queens, he raised you three bet with aces. It came back around to him. The blinds were massive. He ships you snap. There was a queen on the flop, and it was all she wrote. But yeah, you were down to like fumes. Yeah. And to come back from that, I think there was two tables left, yeah. and it comes second. Um, what was different? I mean, you say yourself that you had a different mindset. That you would just want to get it in and off. Oh, I can't be bored. What was different then? I'm not sure to be honest. Like, I I just felt it. It just felt different. Like I can't explain it really. But at first, like when I had like two or three bigs, I was looking at faint times. I thought, well, it's time to go home. <laughs> but like w once I got the first double, I thought, right, we've got a chance if we get another double. Then I got that, and then like once you've got like 13, 14 bigs, you you're back in the game. So. Yeah. And as, as you say, the structure is brilliant as well, so you can sit and wait yeah. and get on with it. As you said, you came second. What was the final table experience like when you got heads up? Did you think, I've got this, or...? Um, I did think that I was going to win, to be honest, but uh, we, we'd already made a deal, so it okay. took quite a lot of the pressure off, so, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, I think back in those days, if you won a GUKPT, going back to Luton, you got a ticket for the grand final. Yeah. So, I mean, the grand final was 2K, and it always was massive turnouts as well, because a lot of the Spanish players' pros used to come over for it. Excuse me, yeah. as well. You've got all the London-based players, so it was, that was another massive field as well. They used, um, to, um, they used to do something as well, Grosvenor, where um, you used to have the champion of champions. Did you ever hear of that? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think uh, Luton it was based in. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, it was I remember. Put, like hundred k in prize pool for like everyone yeah. who's won the side event and uh, main event. Yeah, um, I remember that was the first time. You know Brett Angel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember meeting him there. Um, I think it was my second or third ever job, and you were getting people who would who had won a fifty pound side event in Stockton. Yeah. In a tournament with people that had won the main, the grand final, and it's it was weird because it was like. If you had won a tournament you were in, then it was as Grobner was giving it away. But it was just the stuff back then. It was phenomenal what the, uh, players were getting. And it's just, it's crazy. Uh, and then, you always sign a petition to try and get that back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it was brilliant because it used to attract loads of people. You could buy in as well, I think. Uh, to well, the, the good thing about it as well, like, for the people, the side events are kind of like, a lot more quieter these days, which is not as good, but yeah. like it'd be good. Like, the the one thing that people used to play the side events for is like they used to get that ticket as well yeah. to go into that. So, like, it used to be a lot more appealing. They probably made more rake money as well from that. So, I think it's just it's all changed nowadays as well. Uh, poker kind of evolving and the way things are with money. I think you've got to try and look at it from all points of view. And yeah. I know things aren't the greatest at the time, but. I mean, who knows where we are going forward. Um, going forward on this, 2018, Barcelona EPT. You finished 23rd for 50K. Now, I remember, and I've read that you had quite a few chips, and you got, was that a cooler you got that killed you? Um, I got 40 bigs in with Kings against Ace Queen. It would have put me, like, top three, and it was the biggest ever EPT. Yeah. And it was, like... 1.6 million for a winner, so. Sigh. Um, <clears throat> with those events, because obviously we'll, we'll move on to the WSOP in a minute, Barcelona, EPT, Prague EPT, Monaco, they're like five, six day events. How do you keep yourself focused for like the long structures and stuff? Um, it's tough to be honest. Like you, you just got to kind of stay in the right mindset. Like, if you feel like you're getting bored and you need something to occupy yourself, just like listen to some music or stuff and yeah. Do you have a, like a like a regime like a, a like you wake up in the morning, kinda like light the online stuff, but obviously not online, it's live. Go for a walk, get some breakfast, or do you just roll out of bed, get a shower, and here we go? 
Yeah, the, the second one's me. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you, are you superstitious? Me, like, I, I, I put quite a lot on to, I need enough sleep uh -huh. to be, to like function properly. So as long as I've had a good night's sleep and I, I can like make in five minutes to the casino, then I'm happy. But yeah, as long as you've rested up well, yeah. Yeah. But you don't have any like superstitions or stuff like that. Like you have to go to the same coffee shop or you have to nah, eat the not, same bag of not, chips or stuff like that, no? Nah, not really. <laughs> um, and then on uh, the 2019 World Series of Poker, Six Max came third for 317,000. Yeah. I've seen videos from a few of your friends who were in the rail, the, Brit the famous British rail. <laughs> I've heard songs, I've seen updates. <laughs> Going into that event, um, what, what was there anything leading up to that final table that you thought, yeah, I, I can do well here, I can go deep, or are you always on that positive mindset with that? Well, this is the funny thing. Like, I'd been there since of it. This was the same year that I'd been to watch AJ, so I went from New York to Vegas, and uh -huh. then I was booked in there for like six weeks. So I think this was like. I've gone through the whole of June playing like events nearly every single day in the WSOP and like deep stacks and and had one single cash. So like you can imagine <laughs> what the morale's like now, like <laughs> probably done like forty or fifty K over the series, like nothing to show for it. My money's going down from going out and stuff, like so it, I was pretty stressed coming up to that point, but it's one of those comps where I like I say that six max is my favorite format so i always think that i've got a chance and like when when it's like the bigger buy-ins it kind of makes you need to bring your best game because uh -huh. people aren't going to be messing about in those games really so do you feel that the more short-handed it is the better your game is i think so yeah i'd, I'd say like heads up's a lot tougher these days like a lot of people just mainly focus on that and I not really studied, studied heads up for a long time, but as long as it's like four max or mm. six max, I much prefer it. Um, now, leading up to that final table, I mean, I've looked at the final <laughs> table uh, and it was full of absolute... Uh, Oliver Bousquet, if I'm pronouncing that right, Joe Cada won the main event. Yael Vieira ended up winning it. It wasn't your uh, bog standard uh, 50 pence, one pound player. No, no. When you sit down at these tables uh, nowadays, do you study, like for instance, going at that final table, going at the final two tables, three tables, whatever, the night before and you've got the seat draw, do you get somebody to message you and say, by the way, that's who it is, that's who you're up against, or do you do your own homework? I do my own homework, yeah. And but you like, take it you, serious. The good thing about like playing like um, people like Joe and stuff, like if they've got an online background of normally played with him for like 10 years anyway so you know all about him it's more like the live guys that i have to get like i have to message some people like say ludo or someone like that who's who follows like all the tours and he knows quite a lot of live players yeah. so i'll ask him about like more live players and when, when you're sitting down with these players for instance oliver busquet and yelviera uh joe Cada, does it daunt you in any way or do you just sit down thinking, well, they're just, they're like me. They paid their money. They've got chips in front of them. Or do you sometimes think, fuck, he won the World Series? Shit. It, like, to be honest, it, it don't really bother me. I, I just think, like, if you're, like, putting them on a pedestal kind of thing, like, you, mm -hmm. you're already giving in to them. You've got to believe in what you do to, to be able to beat them at the end of the day. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a good, a good philosophy to have because... For all you know, they could be thinking the same, thinking, Christ, this guy's done this, he's done that, he's an online crusher. And you, you, you can't give away, I mean, especially those stakes, you can't give away any sort of chinks in your armour. You've always got to be A-game all the time. Um, I'd say one thing that I've matured since I've got older, like, back in the day, I'd feel like I had to try and prove a point against uh -huh. these players. Like, I'd want to try and outplay them and show bluffs and stuff, but... When you get older, you realise like you're just burning money doing that. So <laughs> trying not like getting no stupid wars with them, and yeah. So you'd say yeah, up until this point, or this this mainly this uh, this tournament final table, and that 
I spoke to a couple of people and they said that back in the day, young and naive, you were always four bet, five bet, six bet, shoving and stuff like that, monster. Mm. Nowadays, do you think you've evolved and learned from that massively? Yeah, definitely. Now, so, now that everyone's more like on a GTO approach, like you, you can't really get away with the stuff that you used to, to be fair. So this one, 2019, I said Vegas, uh, you go to the final table. Were you nervous? Was that your first time at the, uh, the Thunderdome, as it were? Yeah, yeah, I was, was very nervous to be fair. Like, um, I went, I went to the toilet a few times in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you seek any advice before you started? Like anybody, any of your backers, any of your mates, or that about that might have been there before? Yeah, yeah. Um, normally, like I'm in like quite a few WhatsApp groups. I'll message like see if anyone's got any reads on anyone and speak like. Like about ICM and stuff with me back at like what he, what he thinks I should be doing like in certain spots and what my ranges should be and then that's it, yeah. Um, and you'd been there, yeah, I take it you'd been there before as, as part of the British Rail when somebody else is, um, one of yeah. your mates has been there. So you'll know what the, um, uh, the atmosphere is like. I mean, when you came out, did you know the support you were going to have? Uh, quite, well, <laughs> I'd, I'd been at the bar to celebrate making it because I got quite lucky to be honest with uh -huh. like seven left I think it was I jammed sixers uh -huh. against Charles Kings and I hit a six so I didn't think I was going to make it so we went for a few beers with a few other lads I think there were like ten of us and they were all like oh so and so's coming so and so's coming so I knew it was going to be quite busy so, because I mean one of, one of the hands I'm just going to pull the picture up I'll put the picture on uh, the screen we have uh, Dan Charlton, Richard Kelly, Dom Mahoney. Dom looks like he's in the Green Street. Uh, <laughs> Dean Hutchison, Jake, Middy. Uh, mm. Yeah, it's like the who, Ricky VIP. It is like the absolute who's who uh, British yeah. poker. Um, well, so the funny thing be... is, like, because it was a funded dome, uh -huh. normally, like, the main table, you can fit a lot more people on, so... They're having to turn people away because they couldn't fit everyone in. <laughs> was that, did that give you a little bit of boost? Like every time you like won a hand, regardless whether it was a big all and flip or even just taking a blinds, and you had people chanting, shouting your name. Yeah. Did that it, give you that little yeah, bit of a boost? Yeah, like it was good, but then it, it can be quite off putting as well because you can hear them like they're all getting rowdy and rowdy on the beers and like. You can kind of overhear everything that they're saying, so you can hear all the jokes and stuff and all like it was pretty funny, yeah. It's also good that if you um say you make a big lay down or you think you've been bluffed to like the next hand that you fold, is it good to go over there and speak to some of the guys and say, right, fuck, I think this might have happened, or do you try and yeah, leave that well, I, I'm not really the sort who watches the uh twenty minute delay, but I think like in them situations you kind of have to like with what money were, what what money were to be won? So, yeah, I mean, because a massive, massive uh, bink, as it were, coming forward. I take it this may sound a bit obvious that obviously you're going out for the win. Now, when there's pay jumps, because I've seen the pay jumps are quite massive. If mm. you've got a decision to make, do you focus a lot on winning the tournament? What you think a good tell is on with yourself against the other player, or laddering up? Do you take them all into consideration, or do you think? Yeah, um, yeah, they're all um, they're all different to to each spot, really. Like if if there's someone who's really short, then I'll I'll just wait until they've gone. But normally, like I'll I'll normally take up the spot if I have to, like to try and win the tournament. Usually, uh -huh. I won't shy away from that. Yeah, I mean it's it's good. It's it's like it's like the sort of no fear sort of thing where you. Try and treat every tournament the same, but with those sort of nosebleed stakes, I mean, I said three hundred seventeen grand, astronomical money. It's a great um, bank because it was quite a massive field. Uh, yeah. A lot of the fields in Vegas are leading on to that <laughs> because I said um, the next again day was the World Series main event. Yeah. <laughs> what happened with Aces, uh, Jimmy? Um. <laughs> Well, obviously, like, after I finished the 5K, it was July the 4th, so everyone's out. So, obviously, like, we wanted to go out and celebrate. So, 
rolled in about six or seven in the morning feeling sick and then normally you can like wait until the next day to play the main event but one day was the last day so I had to play that day and obviously I'm not going to want to miss the main so like I've been in better, <laughs> better situations where like I'm more zoned in and stuff but I couldn't miss it so I went down and played like got there at I don't remember the time, but it was a time when um, the guy called Ken Strauss, the, he, um, he ended up like the first hand, I think he was, he ended up stripping off at the table, throwing <laughs> yes, the shoe at the yeah. dealer, that, like that crazy guy. So that happens. And I'm, I'm like, what the hell's just gone off there? You're like, my head's <laughs> just like blown at this point. I'm like, what, what's going on? So I sit down anyway, um, playing for like a few hours. And then the earthquake happens, like the 7.2 one. <laughs> and just as it starts, <laughs> I'm sat down and I've jammed all in with aces. <laughs> so, like, the, the building's shaking all over. And I'm like, well, what should I do? Everyone's running out. And I'm just like, I'm thinking, if I leave table A, man's going to be dead. <laughs> so, like, the guy's in the tank. Like, he's not even bothered about this earthquake. Like, he must be used to him. So, I'm like, what the what the fuck am I meant to do? So I end up sitting out anyway and ends up folding and then I end up just like running out of building but it was just like oh, surreal. I'd never want to do that again. Awful. Well, you, having the fear probably didn't help either, Jimmy. Uh, exactly, mate. And it, so that happens and then like another video surfaces of that same guy, that Ken Strauss. Mm -hmm. He's now at the, um, I think it was Luxor and he's stood on a craps table and he's doing the same thing again, getting naked. So, like, that's happened, that's happened, then that happens. I'm like, wow, what a weird day. <laughs> Very weird day. Yeah, so all those little things kind of add up to the, the experience and stuff. Um, yeah. You also won the uh, Grosvenor Passport. Was that 2018? Yeah. yeah. Now, that was an online tournament. It was like a series, and whoever gets the most points over the series gets the passport, yeah. And that, that gave you the passport for all the live events? Yeah. All the Grosvenor ones? Do you like qualifying online for live events, or would you rather do just like the cash tournaments online? Um, I, well, that's the thing. Like, for poker, like the 1Ks and stuff, I'll just like play in usually 1Ks, uh -huh. 2Ks. Anything over that, I'll try and win seat if possible. But, um, Say like the EPTs and stuff, they used to have like amazing sats, but like died down pretty much now. I think I don't even think the people from the UK are able to play them. Like they've got some gaming law where we can't win satellites or something like that. I've yeah, no I think idea. that's right. Okay, I'll uh, trust you, but <laughs> like I have no yeah, idea. I, I think that's right. Um, with uh, obviously everything locked down and stuff like that. Um. Does it make you appreciate live poker more when you're going to go back, if we ever do go back to normal? Yeah, just the social aspect, really. Like, I miss seeing people I haven't seen for a long time. Um, got in, having a few beers, and then just, like, even meeting new people at the table. Yeah. Like, you meet so many people from different walks of life who have, like, so, some of, like, the 60-, 70-year-old guys who I've, I've never, like, in a different walk of life, I wouldn't really... Mm -hmm. I've I've chance to speak to him, you know what I mean? And some of the stories they have, like, is really good. Yeah, I mean, because you surround yourself by a good bunch of lads, as we've already mentioned, Billy Chattaway, Dan Charlton, the Scottish lads, Midday and stuff like that. Um, they are they are good for morale. Uh, yeah. Away from the table, absolutely some of the best people you'll ever meet. We've, we had Christmas. A couple of years ago, you and the rest yeah. of them came up. Um, I think it was in Edinburgh. Yes, uh, yeah. I, I, I remember, kind of. <laughs> yeah. they, are good, they are good lads um, and going forward it's good to surround yourself by that um, when you get back to normal if it is going to be normal what is going to be the future holding for yourself Jamie poker wise well I think that online it, it's in a bad state at the minute like it's, it's just declining more and more I can't see how it's going to come back to the levels that it was at the minute like it's I mean, stars have got a series on it in a minute. They can't even hit the guarantees. That's just like unheard of, like in years and years for scoops and stuff. So I think I'm going to have to try and like play a lot more live. I think like people always have the bug, the main excuse to pun the bug. 
<laughs> with, a, with a virus. But um, I think like people just love live and that'll always be there. But I, I think online it's just don't look good for the future, to be honest. So for you, you just basically kind of wait to get back live and get out and... Yeah, I, I mean, like, like I was saying earlier, like, they have, like, a, a local six-card home game at local casino. I, I just like going sometimes, if I'm bored, just to, like, have a few beers. Because, yeah. like, I know some of the old guys, like Lawrence Gosney and a few of us. I'll have, I'll have, like, a few beers and, like, on off on that. But, like, it's just to, good to get out just for the social side. The social you know aspect I mean? of stuff, yeah. Um, it, it's funny, like, the amount of times I've, I've done that just to get out of the house and end up getting drunk and... Midi does the exact same thing. We hadn't spoken to each other, and he's just there at the same time as well. It's, it's weird. I was speaking to Midi the other day. That he's he's quality lad. Like he's been awfully quiet recently, but he's a good lad. It just as I said, it's like a lot of the British lads and girls and that. It's, it's good good to be around. Well, Jamie, we'll cut it there. Um, it has been a pleasure to talk to you. Love to the family, and good luck online and live, my friend. You, mate, no problem. Take care, buddy. Cheers, Bob.